baby Jesus and why he became a baby, or we even talk about the wise men. But today, we're going to talk about Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus. We begin in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I just want you to think about what was the process that led up to him in his Christmas season? Because I can guarantee it didn't go as, his, as he planned. Our reading comes from Matthew 1, verse 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. So what in the world did Joseph have to be thinking when he heard this news? Now, I'm going to put myself in Joseph's situation. This is not in the Bible. This is just what I would think as a man. He had to be stunned. He had to be filling in the blanks like, all right, we just got proposed. My babe is picking up a little weight. Usually, you know, you want to lose weight because you want to fit into the wedding dress. Okay, that's a little weird. Hold up. No, she kind of has a bump on her stomach. But I know that can't possibly be because we haven't had sex yet. And then all of a sudden it hits him. She is pregnant. And if you've ever felt betrayed, he has to be thinking, she cheated on me. I cannot believe this woman. She lied to me. He went from the high of, oh, my beautiful future bride, to this low emptiness, anxious embarrassment, and just the ultimate disrespect. Things were not going as he planned. And what would you and I do in this situation? I know a lot of us would go to social media, and we would make the most evil, rude, rude posts trying to expose that person. Some of us would want physical damage to be done. We might be slashing tire, tires, or we might physically want to do something to that person. Or some of us, when we see them, you know what we're going to do? We're going to tell them off and let them know about themselves. Or some of us are sitting here saying, I wouldn't do anything, but I can guarantee in the back of our minds we would be hoping that they get everything they deserve, which is not something good. Now, what do we learn from Joseph, Joseph in this situation? We learn that Joseph was faithful to God and he knew God's word. We learn that he did not try to expose or can cancel people. That's something in our culture that we always hear. If someone does something to you, expose them. Tell your truth. And when I put that, I don't want to be a hypocrite because I can guarantee he probably didn't feel like being loving. He probably didn't feel like being respectful. And sometimes we say, if I don't feel it, I shouldn't do it. And we know God's word is the exact opposite. Sometimes we have to do what we don't necessarily feel, which is to love and to respect. How many times do we misinterpret something? We know that Joseph misinterpreted this, but at times we misinterpret something and we react. We learn from Joseph in this situation, slow down, think, pray, allow God to deal with it. And what we learn from Joseph, too, is when you feel someone has wronged you, don't go tell the world. Don't try to confront that person at lunch. Don't try to confront that person in a public setting. Do it quietly. Tell them how they have wronged you. Now, I just want you to imagine this. In today's age, Joseph calls her. Hello? Hey, babe, how you doing today? Don't hey, baby me. What, babe, what's wrong? I know what you did. What, what are you talking about? You're pregnant. I, babe, I was going to tell you about that later. There's nothing to tell about. Is it Ronnie? Is it Paul? You no good, lying, cheating, running around town woman. You're the woman of the devil. Babe, the, the, the baby is God's baby. Ha! God's baby? So you calling this man God now? Okay. I never want to see you again. I hate you. I don't even love you. I only did this because my parents told me to do this. Don't ever call me again. Click. And then all of a sudden he finds out the truth that it really is God's baby. How he would have had his foot in his mouth and how many times we do that. And when we look at this situation, we can quickly and clearly see that God has a plan for him. But imagine if he did that. Matthew continued. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. What did we learn from Joseph here? We learned that it takes courage to be obedient and go against the culture. Can you imagine what Joseph's boys were saying about him? Like, Joseph, you still going to marry her? You really believe that nobody else impregnated her? Okay, Joseph, you're an idiot, but hey, do what you want, man. All the, the backlash he had to hear, all the, the rumors, all the things swirling around, it takes courage to be obedient to God, and sometimes you will be standing alone. What we also learn from him is what comes from the Holy Spirit, embrace and love it. 
Think about if Joseph would have rejected this and said, no, I do not want to do this. How many blessings would he have missed out on? He would have missed out on the opportunity to raise the Son of God. Matthew continued. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. What do we learn from Joseph here? We learn that God's plan is greater than our plan. Now you think about this, some of us reject God because we don't know the plan that he has for us. We don't trust the plan that he has for us. We don't even allow it to prosper. We also learn that, God, that Joseph did what he was commanded. So he woke up and he did what it was commanded. He didn't wait. God said, do it, and he did it. Part of being obedient to God is doing it in his timing. And what also was cool, though, he didn't try to help God out. So he wasn't like, oh, I'm going to have sex with her, and then maybe this can look like my baby. He said, no, I'm going to wait. Part of being obedient to God is about his timing. Sometimes he says, go. Sometimes he says, wait. What we also learn from this is, where is your mind at right now? Where was Joseph's mind at? I can guarantee Joseph probably was thinking, I want to have a nice little wedding, get married, be a carpenter. He was not thinking, oh, God has something bigger and better in store for me. And that's something for all of us to take in mind. God has a unique purpose for every single person in this room. What does God have in mind for you? Now, some of you might be thinking, this is an extreme case, Mr. Whiteside. This has nothing to do with me. I can guarantee there are some of you right now who feel like I'm not loved. There are some of you who feel you've been disrespected. Some of you might feel you are not getting what you want. Some of you might be thinking things are not going the way you have planned. There could be some that feel guilty and ashamed and embarrassed and anxious. And it could be because of something you've done in the past or because of something that someone else has done to you. Now, Christmas season is all about this. Christmas season is all about embracing our forgiveness that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, gives each and every one of us. It's about embracing our unconditional love that God gives us and also the unconditional respect that he gives us. And it's asking and allowing the Holy Spirit to allow us to give unconditional love to those we don't feel like necessarily loving and we don't feel like ultimately respecting. Unconditional respect is something we also can practice, and that's something that God does for each and every one of us. We pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being a God of unconditional love. I think we forget how many times we've cheated and betrayed you and also been disrespectful to you. We often overlook the unconditional respect that you have given us. We celebrate Christmas because of you and all you have done for us. Bless this Christmas break to bring us back rejuvenated and energized to serve you and fulfill our purposes. Help us to be like jo Joseph and trust your plan. Help us to seek the Holy Spirit and allow him to dwell in our hearts and empower us to love and respect the people around us unconditionally. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Merry Christmas. You are dismissed.